Now that we have the main skeleton of our website, we're going to go ahead and add some content that will actually display on the page. In this lesson, we'll learn about the various text elements that we can use when we build a web page. I'm going to be creating all of this content within the body tag. So I'll come to my body tag and I'm going to start by making a headline. In order to make the largest size headline that's available to us in HTML, we're going to use the H tags. And you have the ability to use H1 through 6. H1 is the largest. H6 is going to be the smallest. Because this is going to be the most important topic heading that we're going to be using on our page, we're going to go ahead and put it in an H1. In addition to changing the size of the text, it will also make the text bold by default. Now once you create CSS, you can augment the design of any of the default HTML tags, but for right now we're just going to use the tags without any CSS so we can learn HTML first because we'll need to set up that structure of the page before we can implement some designs. So I'm going to start off by adding my heading of the bird watchers. After that main heading, I'm going to create a subhead and I'll use an H2 tag for that. Note that the heading tags always have an opening tag and then a closing tag. So you'll need to surround the content that you want to appear within the headings inside the opening and closing tags. I'm going to save my page and I'm going to go to the browser to show you what it looks like. Here's our page and if we refresh you can see that now we have a headline and a subhead and you can see how the text is appearing in bold and in various sizes. The sizes are being controlled by the default styles that are applied to the headings. The next thing that we want to put on the page is we're going to create a couple of paragraphs of text. Because I'm just making this website so that you can learn about HTML, I'm not going to worry too much about the content. So for this example, I'm going to be using Lorem Epsom text. Lorem Epsom text is simply placeholder text. I'm going to get my Lorem Epsom text from Lipsum.com. And if I go to Lipsum.com and scroll down, there's a button that just will generate Lorem Epsom text. And if I click that, it'll go ahead and have some Lorem Epsom text that I'm able to use. So I'll just copy the first couple of paragraphs. And then I'm going to go back into my HTML editor. And after the H2 tag, I'm going to create a paragraph tag and inside the paragraph tag I'll paste the text. Now currently you can see that the text looks like it's going to be formatted as two paragraphs but if I save the page and we look in the browser you can actually see that it just shows as one big long paragraph. Whenever you create line breaks inside of your HTML, extra spaces, line breaks, they actually don't render in the browser at all. If we want to create separate paragraphs, I would need to create a closing P tag here and then another opening paragraph tag here. This will allow me to have two paragraphs display on the page. Now you can see the page looks like this. It's nice that you can utilize this extra space to be able to organize your web page so that it's easier for you to read it. Technically, when the browsers look at the page, they don't really care about the line spacing and the extra indentations and things like that. They would actually render the page just fine if it was just on one big long line of text. But as a human, that makes it really difficult to parse through the information. So generally when we create HTML pages, we use extra line breaks and indentations to be able to organize our page in a manner that is more conducive to something that is friendly for the end user, and that is actually you. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an image onto the page. Now so far all of the tags that we've placed on our page are block level tags. Block level tags will always render an extra line break in the browser. So you can see that everything we've placed on the page so far has a hard return or an extra line break in between it. What I actually want to do now is I want to have an image appear on my page. So I'm going to do that by using the image tag. Now the image tag is a little bit different from these block level tags in that it is an inline element. Inline elements do not force an extra line break. 
The other thing that's going to be different about the image tag is the image tag doesn't wrap around content like the paragraph and the header tags do. So this is one of the special tags that is actually a self-closing tag. That means we don't pair it up with an opening and closing tag. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to start off by using the IMG, that's the image tag. In order for the image tag to display an image, you're going to have to pass on some attribute and value pairs that will tell the image where to get the actual picture from. And you can also specify sizes and, and alt tags, which are very important for usability. We'll start by using the SRC attribute, which stands for source. And this is going to allow me to get from my HTML page to the image. Now let's just step back for a moment so that I can show you how this works. If we look at the folder structure that's containing our project, you can see that here's my root folder. This has the index page, which is the page that we're currently working on. And then we also created a template page and that was just to be a starter page for later. We have this empty pages folder and we have the image folder with the picture of the bird in it. So what we need to do is we need to get from the index page into the images folder and then call the bird file. To do that, we're going to type images forward slash bird dot png. This is going to allow the web browser to navigate from this page into my images folder and pull up my bird image. The other tag that you should always add when you create a image tag is the alt tag. The alt tag displays alternate content which will appear just in case the end user's browser is incapable of showing the image. It'll show some alternate content. Alt tags are also important for accessibility because if a screen reader comes to your site and it can't visually see what's on the page, the alt tag describes what the picture of the bird is. So we'll give this an alt tag of bird pecking. The alt tags do not need to be full sentences. They can just be short descriptive terms that describe what the picture is. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the image tag. Because this tag is one of those special self-closing tags, I do that by creating a space, a forward slash, and then I use my closing angle bracket. Whenever we self-close a tag, this is how we'll do it. So the image tag is going to appear inside the first paragraph and it's going to display the bird image. If we save this page and look at it in the browser, you can see that the page looks like this. Now, by default, the image is going to appear at the full size in which you saved the image. Usually this is what you'll want to do. You'll want to display the image at actual size. And the reason being is because if you have a really big image and you have it appear smaller, well then you're actually using more file size than you actually would need to display that image. And if the image is very small and you try to blow it up and make it look bigger, it's going to lose resolution. It's going to look blurry and the quality is going to look pretty poor. So it's recommended that you actually utilize the images at the size they are. But let me just show you how we can resize the image by passing on some more attributes inside the image tag. I'm going to do that by adding some more attributes. The one that I'll add first is going to be width. So I'm going to type width and for width we're going to put width equals and then in quotes I put the numeric value. The numeric value is assumed to be pixels, so we don't actually put a unit of measurement. We just put the number of the width in pixels. Now by default, if you just specify width and you don't specify height, it'll proportionately scale your image. So you can see how the picture of the bird is now smaller. It proportionally set the width to 200 pixels and then made the height whatever it needed to be to resize the image like this. If we had specified the height as well, and the height was not proportional to what our width setting was, the browser would render it how we specified it, and it would just unproportionately scale the image. Again, that's usually not recommended since it'll stretch or squash your image and it'll look a little strange. The other thing that I'd like to do on my web page is I'd like my text to kind of appear to the right of the image. Currently, only this first line indents to the right of the image. The rest of the text is going to appear under it. This again is a default behavior of how images and text will work. Let's go ahead and make the text appear to the right. We'll do that by passing on another attribute. This one is going to be a line, and I'm going to put a line equal to and then in quotes, 
we'll put left. Now if I save the page and we look at it in the browser, you can see that now the image appears to the left and the text kind of wraps around it to the right. This is more what I'd like to have appear on my page. It is worth noting that this is not the way that you'll usually create alignment. This is kind of left over from pre-CSS days where we didn't have CSS to control the styling of the page. The preferred method to have text wrap around an image is to use CSS to be able to control that behavior. We'll talk more about CSS later in our course and for now we're just going to use this method of allowing the text to wrap around the image but just be aware that this is not the optimal or recommended way and once we learn CSS we'll probably never use this method but I'm going to show it to you because I want to introduce it to you and it is something that you might end up doing because you don't have access to CSS or maybe you'll be working on an old web page but like I said you probably won't use it very often. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of more paragraphs to my document and they'll just come after this last paragraph. Now for the last paragraph I'm going to have the copyright information show. What I'd actually like to do is I'd like to make that little symbol for copyright. The symbol for copyright is the C inside of a circle. Because that's a special character you actually have to use special HTML code to generate that sort of character. The way we make the copyright symbol is we use ampersand and we write copy semicolon this will actually render out as the copyright symbol. So if I save my page, we won't see this text, we'll see the copyright symbol. Here's the other two paragraphs and you can see down at the bottom, here's my copyright symbol. So now we have the basic text, an image, and some headers that are appearing on our page. The next thing we'll do on our page is we'll create some links. We'll do that in the next video.